Welcome guys to another session on dynamic programming solutions and today we are talking about DPV 6.15 the probability of choosing a winner given that team A has won I games and team B has won J games. Let's look at the problem. The problem statement is that we have two teams A and B. A has won I games, B has won J games and the winner needs N games to win the series and we want to find the probability that A will win the series. So the solution is worked out as follows. First of all, we need to set up some intuition for the for the winning here. So we are given I and J here, and pardon me because the J kind of looks like I in this font, but let's just assume this is J. And so what we first do is compute P and Q, which is really how many games are needed for you to win the series. And if n is the number of games you need to win, then a needs n minus i and b needs n minus j games to win. So now from henceforth, if you just focus on p and q as the new variables, that kind of makes the problem much easier to understand. Now, um, for the initial conditions, we have to understand that if p is equal to 0 and q greater than 0, this means that a has reached the goal, right? A has already reached the goal, whereas B has not reached the goal. It still needs some games to win. Probability of this is one, no matter what, because this means A has reached the finish line and B has not, which means A has won. And we know that this is what we need to achieve. So the boundary condition is that this is probability of this event is one, where A has reached the finish line, number of games needed to win, and B has not. We know that this probability is one. So this Keep, keep that in mind, uh, you know, uh, run through this in your head a couple of times till you get it. That P equal to zero and Q greater than zero, this is a certain event. It's always one because we want A to win the game. And if B was to win, it would be the reverse. But, you know, this would be one. But you can, you can set it accordingly. And if it changes to be something else, you know, then you can set these boundary conditions because these are the things that, that are given in the problem. So in this case, Q equal to zero and P greater than zero, which means that, you know, B has reached the finish line and A has not. This probability is zero because this would imply B has won and B cannot win for our, for our dynamic programming. So, so the probability of this is zero, okay? And the initial condition I haven't quite mentioned here, but this really is the probability. Probability is one, probability is zero. Now we set up a, a, a winning function. This is the probability function, and it works on P and Q. And P and Q, we already set it up here. And if you want to figure out the winning probability for some P and Q, then that really is 0.5 because it's, it's equiprobable that either one of them will win. So you can come from two places. Either you came from um, P minus one or Q minus one, which means that if if you are at PQ, then this can come from a previous location where either P won the match or Q won the match, the previous match in the series, right? And probability of each event is 0.5 because both teams are equally likely to win a game. So 0.5 times if P won the match, you came from here. And if Q won the match, you came from here. Either way, you end up on this point PQ. Okay, and here's the equation. Here's the probability equation that connects you to the past. So I guess stay on this slide for a minute or two till you understand both these concepts that first of all, these boundary conditions, what does this mean, right? The boundary conditions are the most important and most confusing part of this problem. Um, that, you know, A has to win and for A to win, you must reach a point where A has achieved the right number of games, which means P equals zero. And again, P is N minus I. Okay, I is already known to be one and J is already known to be one for A and B respectively. So understand this part and then the next part will become almost trivial. So, um, Let's move on to the um, the matrix formulation. So I've written, I guess I should have written the equation. There's the equation right here. And so let's set up the initial condition here. Now you can see that if P equal to zero, no matter what Q is, the probability is one because 
this is the finish line. This shows the finish line that you have already reached, right? And converse of that is when Q equal to zero, which means Q has no more games remaining. But, but sorry, B has no more games remaining, but A has many games remaining, one, two, or three. This cannot happen because this means that A has failed. A has lost the series. This cannot happen in our problem. So we set the boundary condition here as zero. We set these as one. Now it becomes straightforward application of this equation that for any point, you need to look at the point above and point on the left and just average them using this 0.5 times this equation. So just look at this one. Okay, and here I've worked it out. 0.5 times zero and 0.5 times one. So this becomes 0.5, okay? And in the problem, you are basically given the example of this, which is A has one game to win and B has three games to win. And what is the probability that A will eventually win this series? It's 0.875. And in the book, if you see in the problem, it's seven by eight, which is 0.875. So if you run through this whole thing, and depending on how many games in your problem, you can reach some point where let's say A has four games remaining and B has four games remaining, then you can read off the probability from this, this square, and that'd be your answer. So that's mostly it for the, the solution and the matrix formulation. Hopefully you understood all that. The order of this is again very straightforward. Now the remaining problems here would be n minus i and n minus j. So the order really is, you know, n squared because all the other i and j, if they're constants, they would get eliminated. So the order of the problem is n squared. You could probably, um, depending on i and j's values, you could save a lot of time not calling it n squared, et cetera, et cetera. But the generalized problem is order n squared. So that's it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the problem and, uh, and um, the various aspects of the solution. It was a little bit of a tricky problem because instead of thinking in terms of i and j, we have to kind of reverse and start thinking in terms of another set of variables, p and q, which is the remaining number of pro, uh, number of matches that one needs to win. And once you get into that um, uh, definition, and once you understand how to set up the boundary conditions here um, for the final uh, final uh, statement in the in the book that you know a has to win, and this is very important, very critical to understand that this has to happen. Otherwise, there is filling this does not make any sense. So once you figure this out and this out and the P and Q part, I think the whole problem falls into place and becomes fairly easy. So thanks a lot, guys, for watching. And uh, if you have not done so, please subscribe to my channel if you enjoy dynamic programming. And uh, if you are looking at it, you know DPV book, um, I'll be bringing you more solutions in this series. And we are at the midway mark here because this is problem 6.15. We are exactly at halfway through this um, solution set. And we'll continue solving through the remaining. And very soon, hopefully, we'll reach the end. So thanks again. And until next time, bye-bye.